Hey friends, recently I did a remix for my friend Somatost and there was a lot of questions that I had coming in from my students on my courses and a couple emails asking how I made some of the sounds in this tune. So let's go ahead and listen to the sounds that they were asking about. So specifically the sounds they were asking about were these two. One question I even got was, which serum patch did you use to make these sounds? And um, I like serum. Serum is really cool. Uh, I use it. I use it uh, mainly to make effects um, for transitions and things like that. Um, but how I made these sounds actually was using uh, all native Ableton devices. What Serum does, I think for a lot of people, is what they enjoy about Serum anyway, is that you can make morphing sounds. And so people often attribute morphing sounds with wavetables, right? So wavetables usually have a process where they morph between the different waveforms inside of the wavetable, and it gets this kind of morphing effect. But morphing doesn't have to be done with wavetables. Morphing can be done in many different ways. And now I want to show you a pretty interesting workflow in Ableton where you can make morphing sounds uh, making your own effect chains and stuff like that. So let's check this out. So take a listen to this sound. So this is actually just an operator doing this. Right, just doing like a little bass bomb, right? Uh, so why don't we go ahead and build this from scratch? That's probably the best way to do this. I'm just gonna grab I'll grab a wavetable, why not? You can do this with an operator or with a wavetable. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a bass drop. So maybe I'll start with the high C, and I'll go all the way down to this low F. And maybe we'll make this, I don't know, pretty long. And off the bat, you get, you get this sound. Right, it's polyphonic. So the first thing to do here is I'm going to go into wavetable and make this monophonic, right? And you also have glide time. Right, so if I turn this glide time up, now if I make this note happen after this note, check this out. This note, see how it's overlapping into this note? Might be easier to see if I collapse it. Yeah, you see that? All right, so check it out. See that? Well, if I go in here and I make the glide time longer, we can get a longer dive. Right? Maybe I'll transpose this down two octaves. Right, so it's a very deep sine waveform. And, you know, I'm gonna need some harmonics here, so maybe I'll... Okay, so staying true to what I was trying to do in the first place, I'm not gonna morph these wavetables, right? I'm not gonna take this and morph between them, right? Because that's not what I'm trying to show you here. I'm gonna leave it on this kind of like sharp sawish, squarish kind of thing. And maybe I'll take some of the, the top end off of it so it's a little bit more... Right? Okay, so basic sound. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to think about where I want this morphing sound to start from. What is the effect that I want for the first part of the morphing sound? So maybe what I'll do is I'll grab... Let's go with the chorus. Nice big wide chorus, right? And I want to add some harmonics back into this. So maybe I'll grab an amp and we'll try it on. Boost mode's cool. And if you hit this button, it becomes stereo. So any stereo information going into it will come out. Right? So let's say that's my first sound. That's the first sound that I want to go for, right? What I can do is I can click on both of these top bars, okay? Right click and go to group. Now, when you group these together, obviously you've made a kind of a shell for these effects, right? 
What you've also done is you've made what's known as an effect chain. So if you click on the second show hide chain list button, you now have a chain. Okay. Now I need to start thinking about what I want my other, what I'm morphing to. What is the sound that I want to morph to? Okay. Well, maybe I'll grab a frequency shifter. All right. And look, if I drag it into here, it creates a new chain. If I drag it though over here, it gets dropped inside the chain that I already have. So it's really important to do this. Okay. Now we have another chain, all right? Now this, if I play this now, both chains are gonna play at the same time. It's gonna be super loud. Whoa, that's not what we want. So what I wanna show you is this next really awesome thing. If I click on chain, so what the chain does normally is that you can choose different effect chains depending upon what you're doing. And this is a great way to make a, a bunch of really quick effects in Ableton. At some point, maybe I'll break this down a little bit more, but for our purposes today, what I wanna show you is that you can morph between any chains that you want and I'll show you how to do that. The first thing you need to do is say that each one of these chains is going to be across the entire 128, or I guess you could say zero through 127 selection areas of the chain selector. If that doesn't make sense, that's okay, just watch. I'm gonna take this chain and drag this blue thing all the way out. Same thing with the second chain. I'm gonna take this chain and drag it all the way out. Now, there's also this smaller bar. Do you see this little smaller bar up here? This is the fade range. Now this is where all the magic happens. If I take this fade range, not here, but I, I, I hover my mouse until, do you see how it gets highlighted? I'll drag this back this way. I'll take this chain and drag it back this way. So you can see where the, where the, the dark blue is versus the light blue. Now where the dark blue is, that means this chain will be the dominant, if not completely taking over effect. And the lower chain is this frequency shifter, which I might as well go ahead and scramble up a little bit. <laughs> now, in order to hear the second chain, I have to move the chain selector slider, see this blue thing right here, all the way over here. So now we can listen to. Now we can hear the, the frequency shifter, right? So maybe I'll grab an erosion and put it after so we can put some harmonics back in. Okay, so now we've got the kind of sound that I want on that side of the chain selector. So if I do this, I can go. Now you can hear that I just clicked on my mouse, dragged it, and I faded between these two things. In a lot of ways, this is like a morphing wavetable, right? I've created a situation where I can fade between these two chains. Now, it gets a lot better than this though. What I could do is I could double click on this clip, right? And I could go to my envelopes. And as you can see, audio effects, audio effect rack, chain selector is a, is a modulatable function. But as you can see in Ableton, it's stepped. And the reason it's stepped is because you normally use a chain selector to select between different static settings, right? But in our case, we want this to be kind of uh, less of a stepped thing because there's no way to collapse this. I can't collapse this down into a visible range. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my wavetable and click on this top bar right here where it says show hide macro controls, all right? Now the next thing that you can do when you have these macros open is you also see this map button. Now if this map button isn't visible to you where it is for me, it's likely because you're showing your chain list. If you hit hide, you can see the map key is above the macros. But I actually wanna look at the chain list. I'm gonna click on map, click on this bar right here. Do you see how this bar gets highlighted? What this bar is, this is the chain selector bar, right? So I can map this to a control. Now check this out, if I play this, I can fade between my two settings, isn't that sweet? So, and then of course, if I double click on my clip, we can see, look at that. Now we have a nice smooth way to interpolate between one chain to the other, right? And I can do the whole range in one view, all right? So I'll do it like this. Now. Another thing I want to say is that the second chain is obviously quieter than the first. So I'm going to turn the first one down a bit. And let's see if we can get kind of a, a smooth transition between these two. Now, that's not really happening fast enough. So another thing I can do is I can go in here and I can look at my audio effect rack chain selector. And I can maybe make this happen a bit faster. Now the rad thing is that I could also maybe do this number, <laughs> go back and forth between them over the, over the course of the sweep. Right? 
So in, in, in essence, what's going on here is that I haven't changed anything when it comes to my source material, right? I'm just morphing between two different effects. In this way, you can create a dry-wet effect on anything. Like, okay, so normally, uh, what do we got? Redux. Redux doesn't have a dry-wet control, okay? So what I could do is I could drop a Redux in here. Let's say this is my Redux sound. So that's fully wet. Let's say I want a little bit of this sound, but I don't want the whole thing. What I can do is right click on the top, go to group, okay? I can then click on my chain list. If I right click and say create chain, and I don't have anything in it, check this out. This first chain has Redux in it, the second one doesn't. All I gotta do is now show my chain list and do the same thing. Drag both of these blue guys out, make the fully wet signal when it's all the way up, make the fully dry signal when it's all the way down, okay, show my macros, click on map, click on the chain selector list, click on this chain selector, and as you can see, I can now, right, I can, I can blend between the completely affected sound and the non-affected sound, okay? So now I can add, before I didn't have a dry-wet control, now I've basically created a dry-wet control for my Redux. Let's go, let's go a little bit farther with this, with this effect now that we're here. So another thing I can do is this chain selector is moving between two different areas, right? What I can do is I can use this mapping control here to map more, to more than one feature, okay? Maybe another thing I want to do is increase the rate of the chorus as it moves up. So I'll click on the rate of the chorus, go back to this first knob, and then it gives me the entire range. So maybe I want to dial that back a little bit. And let's see what happens now. Now you can see that the chorus wet is going to move through different amounts. Right? Let's do the same thing with the frequency shifter. So that's in my second chain. And right now, fully wet, we have uh, 260 hertz. So maybe what I'll do is I'll map this to that same first knob, right? Remember, because the knob is moving. I've, it's already mapped, okay? It's moving up and down in, in the clip. What I'll do is I'll say, okay, I'll go up to three, which is close to 2.6, right? And then before I'll go really, really wild, like way out there. So let's see what happens now. So now we're starting to hone in on what that sounded like, right? That original riff. Another thing I can do is let's take a look at the erosion frequency, right? We could make this kind of go all the way up to 8K or 7.94, whatever that is, and go all the way down to something lower. So let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to map this control, click on it, right? Make sure it's clicked. Click on map, and now it appears up here. So what did we get? 8-ish, and then something wacky low. Let's see what happens now. You can hear that. <laughs> and maybe uh, just to make this a little bit louder, I'll turn the amount up. Now, another thing I want to say, this is so much more flexible than just slapping in a wavetable, okay? There are so many more reasons that this is more flexible. Another reason that this is more flexible is that I can go back into the original source, Okay, and once you've done all this other wacky stuff and you've got all these effects going, then you can start to modulate the original, right? So something I can do is I can go in here and maybe I'll go to my modern warping techniques, okay? And I'll do a little bit of wave folding. So remember, th I can't use that macro there, but what I can do is I can go to my macro and I can select the envelope, okay? Copy, and then I can go to the wavetable and I can choose effect two. This is essentially the wave folder, right? Paste it. <laughs> Who knows what's gonna happen? Let's find out. <laughs> That's so rad. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so we've made some wacky sounds. Now, a lot of the time when you do this, you can start to have some really crazy wiling out happening in your frequency ranges, uh, and you wanna kinda of control it, okay? so. I would say that the last step here, if I was making the sound, is to grab a multiband dynamics, drop it in there. And multiband dynamics can help us rein in some of these wacky frequencies. Let's take a look at what's happening. We can see the low end kind of coming in and out, right? So finally, what we can do with this multiband dynamics is we can kind of bring in the low end. You'll notice that when I go between this side of the chain and this side of the chain, the low end kind of disappears, right? So. 
see it go away and come back. So what I can do is I can drag this out a little bit and say that make my this is this is the B side, right? So there's B and A. A is this side. That's these thresholds, and B is this side. What I can do is a little bit of uh, upward compression, right? And what this will do is as I increase this amount, everything below this threshold will go up in volume. So now we get... Now we get that low end to stay in a little bit. See, let's go ahead and listen to this by itself. Right? And without it, we get... Hear that low end almost disappear. So that's, that's something you can do with multiband that really helps. And this kind of finalizes this sound, right? So, yeah, in total we get this... And we've made a, a morphing sound using Ableton's chain selector, okay? So at some point, I'm going to be putting together a course on sound design, and specifically sound design with Ableton Live. Um, at this point, if you're not aware, I have courses already out. One of them is mixing and mastering with Ableton Live, and the other one is songwriting and composition with Ableton Live. If you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy my teaching style, I highly recommend that you check out the links that I'm going to put below. And uh, if you're interested in someday uh, taking the sound design course that I am going to be actively creating, just put your email in that link down there, and I'll let you know when it's out. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time.